Welcome everyone to 6.2, the natural logarithmic function. Again, in this section, it's going to be a little bit of review. We're going to identify some properties that uh, we've gone over in algebra, at least before, of the natural logarithmic function. And then we're going to break out the new stuff. We're going to learn how to take the derivative of the natural log. We're going to learn how to do some new integrals. And then finally, we're going to pull out the big guns. And those are uh, this idea of logarithmic differentiation. So we're going to figure out what exactly that is and when would we want to use logarithmic differentiation. All right, so let's get started with a definition. So in this section about the natural logarithmic function, we need to know what is the natural logarithmic function. And so this is a little bit interesting because we're going to be using calculus to define this function. So here we go. It's the thing that's defined by, and I'm going to write natural log of x, it's ln x, is equal to the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. And that's for any x greater than 0. So this is interesting. We're defining the natural log to be the thing whose derivative is 1 over x, right? Using that fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, so let's look at these laws of logarithms really quick. If x and y are positive numbers, r is a rational number, then, well, instead of taking the product of two numbers and then applying the natural log, you could instead break this apart with addition. So that's going to be the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. And instead of uh, doing the quotient of two things, x and y, you could break this up with subtraction. So this is the natural log of x sub minus the natural log of y. And then finally, uh, instead of having this nice exponent x to the r, you can bring that r down in front. Hopefully you remember these properties from your good old algebra days. All right, so let's try using these properties to do a problem. We're going to try to express this natural log of 3 plus 4 natural log of 4x as a single logarithm. And the idea is I'm going to use these properties a, b, and c. So the first thing I want to do is actually use this power rule to bring this 4 as an exponent. So this is going to be the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 4x all raised to the fourth power. And now I can use this sum rule, right? I can kind of smash these things together um, to get the product, right? So the natural log of 3 times, and that's going to be 4x all raised to the fourth power. Now we could spend a lot of time trying to reduce this down, but uh, we have it as a single logarithm, so this is how I would submit the answer. Okay, so let's move on uh, to my remark and get back to a little bit more of the calculus stuff. And that was that we've defined this natural log based on an integral, right? And we could take the derivative of that integral and then using the fundamental theorem of calculus, that tells us that the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. Okay, and now with natural logs, there's this other thing. There's this e, right? So e is the number such that the natural log of e, which is kind of this natural exponential that we'll be learning about later, the natural log of e is equal to 1. And so in general, if we combine uh, this above remark here with the chain rule, we can take the derivative of kind of the natural log with another function inside of it, and that's going to give us 1 over g of x, right? Because the derivative of the natural log is 1 over the function. So 1 over g of x. And then because of the chain rule, it's times g prime of x. So let's try to use this. And I'm going to find the derivative of a relatively complicated function. Basically, right now, we're just going back to all of our Calc 1 stuff and saying, hey, now we can do calculus with these new functions, right? I have this natural log thing. Let's take the derivative of it. So according to that chain rule here, the derivative of this function is 1 over all of the inside stuff, leave that alone, times the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of the inside, that's another chain rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of its outside, cosine, right, is the derivative of sine. And then I'm going to times by the derivative of its inside, 6x. And again, I wouldn't simplify any. I would just leave it just like this, you know, if I was trying to submit this on web work, quizzes, exams, something like this. Okay, so one more page. 
uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about expanding these things. So the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x turns out it's also 1 over x, surprisingly enough. And then we can talk about this in more cases, essentially. Let me also write down if you integrate 1 over x dx, well, then you should technically get the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And so this will work for kind of any old x. Now it's not just positive x. And then finally, I'm going to write down the integral of tangent, which we've never done before. And the claim is that it's the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus c, of course. OK, so I've made a lot of claims here. Let me kind of explain these a little bit. So let me start with this. The derivative of the absolute, sorry, the natural log of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. And the way that I want to do this is trying to sketch a picture. So let me try to sketch a picture of the natural log of the absolute value of x here. OK, so I'm going to start off with what the natural log looks like. And hopefully remember this from algebra days. But if you don't, go ahead and pull out your favorite calculator and graph the natural log of x. OK, and now, because I have the absolute value of x, right? normally natural logs don't like 0 or negatives. But now, right? Even if I plug in a negative, I take its absolute value, and it's fine. So this kind of looks like a mirror image of the natural log of x reflected over this y-axis. That's what the natural log of the absolute value of x looks like. And now I want to try to sketch its derivative. And if I try to sketch its derivative, I hope that it comes out looking like 1 over x. OK, so I'm going to take a few just test points, because I want to just convince myself. So here's a few test points here all along this function. And I just want to graph approximately what the derivative is. So remember, that's the slope of a tangent line. And so let me kind of point out these x values here, and I'll plot them down here. OK, so now again, I'm going to try to figure out slopes of tangent lines, because that's going to tell me something about the derivative. So here, you can see the slope is just barely negative. And then it gets more negative, and then it gets super negative. Right? This thing is very negative slope. And then all of a sudden, it becomes super positive slope, and then less positive slope, and then a little bit less. Right? And it seems like it's approaching 0 slope as we go on more and more. So let's try to sketch these things. So it's a little bit negative, and then a little more negative, and then super negative, which I'm going to just draw down here. And then all of a sudden, on the next side, it's super positive. And then a little bit less positive, and then less positive, but still positive. And so if I try to connect all of these things in something that looks reasonable, you can see the graph that I get looks a lot like our friend 1 over x. All right, so now I'm pretty convinced. Of course, the integral of 1 over x dx uh, being the natural log, that's uh, obvious kind of from this fundamental theorem of calculus. So I'm happy with that. So let's try to convince ourselves about this integral of tangent of x dx. So I'm going to write tangent as sine of x over cosine of x. And then the way that we're going to do this is with some u, uh, u substitution here. So let's see, my u is cosine, my du is negative sine of x dx. And so let's go ahead and substitute these in. And now I know what the integral of 1 over u is. It is the natural log of the absolute value of u. And well, my u in this case, well, I, I guess I'll just write u. But my u in this case is cosine, right? So this is negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x plus c. And now staring at this, you know, I need to see how can I get secant from this? Secant. Well, I need to remember my properties, my properties of the natural log. So one thing I can do is that I can take this negative sign and make it as part of the exponential. And then, well, I know uh, when I raise something to the negative first power, that's the same thing as 1 over that. So 1 over the absolute value of cosine of x. And then I need to remember, what is secant? Well, secant is 1 over cosine. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus c. So indeed, 
Uh, now we know what the integral of tangent is, something that we never knew before today. All right, so the last thing I want to do in this video before we take a break is that I want to tell you the steps of logarithmic differentiation, and then in the next video, we'll practice. So the first thing in logarithmic differentiation, well, it's called logarithmic differentiation, so I want to take the natural logarithms of both sides. So I have some equation that I want to take the derivative of, and the first thing I'm going to do is take the natural logarithm of both sides. So both sides of the equation, y equals f of x. And then use the laws of logarithms that we've talked about in this video to simplify. The second step, well, it's differentiation. So I need a derivative in there. So let's differentiate implicitly with respect to x. And then finally, well, solve that resulting equation for y prime. All right, so now we know what logarithmic differentiation is. Let's take a quick break and stretch our legs, and then in the next video, we'll see how we can apply it and when we would like to apply it. I'll see you shortly.